Well, last Sunday at Hell in a Cell, Sheamus made history when he accepted the Open Challenge and defeated CM Punk to become European Champion. Sheamus is now the first man in the WWE to have held the European Championship twice. Now, admittedly, Sheamus initially, uh, you know, he didn't really want to be European Champion as he felt that it was a step down from his capabilities, so I don't know what this really says about Sheamus' viewpoint for himself right now. But, um, he is very satisfied with himself for having won the title. And this right here is an individual who is, uh, very much fixated on becoming a champion again. Jack Swagger has had a downfall year, to say the least. Things really have not been going Swagger's way. We'll see if that can change. We'll see if Jack Swagger can maybe turn things around for himself. He's uh, definitely not given up hope. The guy is definitely still feeling very hopeful of a future as a champion. And uh, I'll s we'll, we'll see tonight if he can defeat Sheamus. That's going to be a really tough challenge. i, I got to admit... Of the, the longest reigning world heavyweight champion in history being the current European champion definitely puts a lot of pressure on uh, those that want to overcome Sheamus as we know uh, the European championship will be uh, delegated primarily to superstars uh, following Survivor Series uh, which is about a month and a half away from now so I'm very curious to see uh, how exactly Sheamus is going to handle the fact that by being the European Champion, he won't be featured here on SmackDown quite as much. He'll be, uh, considered more of an up-and-comer, despite the fact the man is a former World Heavyweight Champion. That's the, uh, price that you pay when you do open challenges. CM Punk not here tonight. We've been told, uh, in fact, in the follow-up to Hell in a Cell, there has been a severe injury coming out of Hell in a Cell. In fact, more than one, um... Uh, I will be sure to kind of tell you them as I recall them, but to my knowledge, uh, we have been informed that uh, at, at Hell in a Cell we saw an injury, obviously, uh, I think this might not come as a much of a surprise to anyone, but Rey Mysterio came out of the Triple Threat Steel Cage match, uh, unfortunately, with an injury. Uh, he will be off for a little while now. The former United States Champion will be taking this time to recover. But uh, Damien Sandow will not be short of any challenges as Big Boss Man has uh, definitely opened his eyes to who Damien Sandow really is. And now I think it's his time to try and take down the uh, intellectual savior. We'll see how well he can do with that, though, as uh, I must admit, Damien Sandow, you know, he's always two steps ahead. Uh, we also know that one half of the former WWE Tag Team Champions have suffered an injury. There is no saying when, but unfortunately, Edge will be off for a period of time. So Christian must go at it alone for the time being. So unfortunately, the Edge and Christian Road Warriors rematch will not be happening just quite yet. Whoa, what the hell? How did that happen? Swagger. I think he really blew an opportunity for something big there. And there you go, German suplex by Jack Swagger. Right I'll say Swagger is uh, bringing it to Sheamus here tonight. I thought he uh, had a very interesting little open challenge of his own at Hell in a Cell as a gold dust defeated Swagger. Swagger's new outlook on life is that he is thankful for every opportunity he gets. So here tonight, whether he wins or loses, he claims he will be thankful to have even had this spotlight here tonight. Challenging for the European... Well, not challenging for the European Championship, but challenging the European Champion. Oh, nice move there by Swagger as he uh, took the leg out from underneath Sheamus, but Sheamus with the reversal. I wonder if uh, things will ever turn around for Jack Swagger, if uh, he'll be able to pull off that upset victory. Whoa, 
Swagger not allowing Sheamus to uh, create that opening for himself. What is happening with this game right now? It got worse somehow. All of our new champions in action tonight, though. It's going to be a real treat to see them all compete in their first matches as the new champions. I mean, SmackDown, sorry. Complete refresh. Just a little while away from uh, Survivor Series. I mean, we do still have a month and a half. Everyone that's currently a champion will have to defend before Survivor Series. And that, that could be interesting to see what where that leads things. Swagger now got Sheamus up. Oh! I mean, a count out victory is still a victory, and I think Swag is realizing that. Dropping for those push ups, and Sheamus into the ring, and Swagger catches him. Gut wrench powerbomb. This could be it. This could be the big moment for Jack Swagger. Oh. I guess not. But he's still in it. Swagger has not given up. No, he is not at all. He's brought his A game to the ring right now. Sheamus, I think, being humbled by Jack Swagger right now. Sheamus catch. Uh oh. Uh oh. Here we go. The high cross. What was that to just clip through Sheamus? Why is this match glitching so much? High cross by Sheamus, cover on Swagger, and unfortunately, that calls the end of the match. Well, I gotta say, Jack Swagger had a nice little comeback moment there. Unfortunately, it did not quite go his way in the end, I must admit. But it was a valiant effort. Oh well, you win some, you lose some. That's what they say. He definitely gave it his all, and you can't fault him for that. Jack Swagger had a pretty decent uh, showing again here tonight. I feel like if he just picks his fights a little better, he might actually be able to pick up a victory. Maybe see if he can go back to ECW. Walk up with Santino. Or Sin Cara. <laughs> that could be good. Anyway, as we move on here tonight... Uh, our next matchup, I believe the new United States Champion Damian Sandow is in action as he's set to face off against the Big Boss Man. I feel like a lot of fans are kind of conflicted on how to feel about this matchup. We know that Big Boss Man is a culprit that a lot of people aren't too fond of, but in this situation, I think a lot of people just want to see Damian Sandow get his comeuppance, and I think Big Boss Man is definitely going to be the one to do that. The new United States Champion may have pulled a fast one over on Big Boss Man uh, last Sunday at Hell in a Cell, but the question is, where do you go from there as Damian Sandow? How do you actually get out of this situation? How do you overcome the Big Boss Man? This guy is serious business, and you just fooled him into thinking that he had an ally just to double-cross him at the last second. Yeah, it paid off in the time, but will it be a long-lasting payoff for Damien Sandow? That I am really not too sure of. He's the champ right now, but you gotta think Bossman beat Sandow tonight. He's a contender immediately. And just like that, Sandow's in some serious jeopardy. We managed to catch up with Damian Sandow following Hell in a Cell and ask him how exactly he felt about um, his situation. You know, how, how did he feel uh, after what he had pulled on the big boss man? Sandow said he felt no remorse. He felt that if someone was enough of a Neanderthal that he could take advantage of, advantage of them. And at no point did they ever realize that he was clearly manipulating them. And that's all on them. 
and Damien Sandow's mind. He is guilt-free. The big boss man is just simply an easily manipulated fool that Damien Sandow got the better of. So this guy is very proud of himself for what he accomplished at Hell in a Cell. I think uh, some people may have definitely seen that one coming, but uh, nonetheless, the big boss man did not. He had thought he had found an ally and a, a way to be guaranteed to be coming out United States champion, and uh, I think he learned a valuable lesson about trusting people like Damien Sandow. Well, here we go, big boss man and Sandow. In the ring, and boss man not wasting any time at Sandow with a quick reversal there. And I think that just goes to show he was expecting that out of boss man. He was expecting that hostility. And it's crazy to think a few weeks ago, these two set foot in the ring against one another, and they played wise, and they didn't even actually lock up. They just kind of circled each other, and no actual fight took place. Sandow is uh, definitely showing off his wits once again right now, as he is uh, obviously expecting... Big Boss Man to be on the more aggressive side of things, and he's kind of handling him accordingly. Oh, right to the gut. Boss Man really has to rethink his strategy here, and when you're up against such an avid thinker as Damien Sandow, who, as I say, it's like playing chess. This guy is just so many steps ahead of you. How are you going to come out on top? How are you going to best him? We know for a fact that Boss Man is a clear example of more brawn than brains. The struggle is going to be very serious for Boss Man in this matchup as he goes for that splash there. Referee didn't even think to start counting that. That was a little strange. I say, it's just weird. We've seen like almost this bromance between these two for a little while, but it appears now that that is very much out the window. Damien Sandow is getting absolutely manhandled by the big boss man, or at least he was. Damien Sandow going to be a very offensive fighter in this matchup. He realizes the best way to deal with boss man is to brute force him in return. At least that's what I'm picking up on. I don't, I don't know how correct I am for saying that, but... I couldn't even get in the head of Damien Sandow. I'm, I'm plain and simple, I am just not smart enough to understand what someone like Damien Sandow could be thinking and the way he's going to function in this matchup. Big boss man coming off the top. What are we going to see here? Oh, clubbing hands down at the skull. And I think boss man's a little too focused on trying to just pick up the quick win over Damien Sandow, clearly underestimating this guy's physical abilities, which you definitely don't want to do. I know Sandow doesn't exactly come off as a very physically imposing individual, but uh, he can be pretty ruthless. Just because he's smart doesn't mean he isn't strong. This is where Big Boss Man finds his advantage point, though. Damien Sandow being dragged out to the outside, where Boss Man can be a lot more physical as he sees fit. Boss Man promised us for five days now he's been stewing on the idea of pure punishment for Damien Sandow. Boss Man calls himself the Law of Smackdown. And Sandow, oh, did not see that one coming. And back and forth. Oh, wow. It actually recognized the fact that the Law title's on the line in the main event. That's really nice. Boss Man is just laying into Damien Sandow now. Here comes the cover. Can this? Can he beat the U.S. champion? Uh-oh. Winding up. Big right hook across the face of Sandow. Here's a cover attempt by Boss Man. No. And now what's Boss Man doing? What is Boss Man looking to do here? 
Sandow sends Boss Man over the steel steps. It looked like Boss Man had kind of shifted his focus from trying to win this matchup in an ordinary way. Sandow with a quick poke to the eyes as he took control of the lockup. Boss Man just not letting up. Seeing a very, very physical side of the big boss man right now. Damien Sandow in some serious trouble here. The United States champion elevated to the top rope for a superplex. Goes for the cover. Sandow kicks out once more. Big shoulder tackle attempt, but Sandow with the reversal. Boss man. Poke the eyes of Sandow, and then the Boss Man Slam! The finishing move of the big Boss Man, and Sandow just about reached the ropes. Sandow using the ropes to his advantage to stay in this one. And then the knee lift. The United States Champion getting the best of the big Boss Man right now. Outwitted him again. He knew that the running momentum of the Boss Man Slam would land Sandow close to the ropes. And he used that to his advantage to be able to get the quick rope break and stay in this. That slam would have absolutely finished Sandow off ordinarily. Now Sandow really focusing on trying to take Boss Man off of his legs. I guess you take a big man like this, he's got to bear the weight of people over his shoulder to hit his finishing move. Boss man coming outside here. Sandow, hold up a minute. Sandow going for a terminus on the outside. I don't really know how that benefits him here, but big boss man laid out with the terminus as this one has become very much in the favor of the United States champion. Boss man wasting little to no time getting right back on the offense on Damian Sandow. Boss man is setting Damian Sandow up on the top as he backs away and oh, big boot setting Sandow outside the ring. That's a rather vicious way to get someone out. Man now looking for a cool suplex onto the concrete. You saw Sandow just about had the wherewithal to quickly put his hands over his neck there. That could have been serious trouble and then winding it up with a big fist for the big boss man. Where's boss man? Oh, come on, boss man. Taking this to a whole other level. Boss man thinking about it and Sandow goes straight through the barricade. Some serious physical damage endured by Damien Sandow here. This is not a title match, believe it or not. And Boss Man's... Oh, hang on. Boss Man. I guess a win's a win, right? Boss Man in the ring. Nice and easy. And he's celebrating. Referee. Uh, there you go. <laughs> really took his time to make sure there. There's the 10 count. The big Boss Man... I guess by any means necessary, just wanted to beat Damien Sandow down, make him pay tonight, and he did just that. May have been a count out victory, but honestly, a victory is a victory. And the big boss man now holds one over Damien Sandow. You gotta think a US title shot is definitely down the line for the big boss man. This one is far from over between these two. As we move on to our next matchup of the night, the new WWE Tag Team Champions, the Road Warriors, just about narrowly escaped promised retirement as they are set to face off in tag team action against Too Cool.
Tag Team Contest is scheduled for one fall. On the way to the ring, at a total combined weight of 436 pounds, Scotty Too Honey and Grandmaster Sexy Too Cool. Well, uh, interestingly enough, Rikishi has um, stayed very quiet on his Hell in a Cell loss, which was alongside these two. Too Cool and uh, Rikishi have not really been seen together too much, following the loss to the Usos at Hell in a Cell. I hear Rikishi clearly not taking that very well. So I'm curious to see what the future holds for them as a trio. But, uh... Nonetheless, here tonight we got a uh, two cool and tag team action. They get honors of facing the new champions. Well, we were told the Road Warriors have got a nice surprise for us, and there it is. Brand new set of tag team championships here on SmackDown. Road Warriors said that they want to forget the Edge and Christian era as W Tag Team Champions. It's time that we left them in the past and were reminded of the Road Warriors, two gladiators. Symbolic there in the championship design, which they promise will forever remind them of the team that, s that uh, signified the importance of tag team wrestling, the team that kind of put it on the map, and the team that really changed it by becoming the first team ever to capture all three championships and that title design will forever be in commemoration of that victory as they want to leave as i say the edge and christian era in the past at some point edge and christian have promised us they will be back for their tag team championships that they feel they were robbed of at hell in a cell i would certainly not say that that was a hell of a fight from both teams and it's a real shame when one team just can't accept that they lost and simply weren't the better men on that night Nonetheless, though, it's great to see the Road Warriors back in action here on SmackDown. These two, uh, I think, are in for a great run. It's great to see them back on a weekly competition, and the, the Too Cool will be a great challenge to kind of welcome them back. Interestingly enough, something that I think a lot of people have forgot about has finally been lifted. Goldust and Yoshitatsu are finally eligible to challenge for the WWE Tag Team titles once again. It's been, <laughs> it's been about half a year that they have had to wait, but now that Edge and Christian are no longer the champions, they can get right back in line for a title shot uh, whenever they like, really. I gotta be honest, I don't think they're particularly ranked high on the tag team division. They've not actually been consistent in competing as a team since they were banned from the WWE tag team titles. I tell you, if you're, if you're too cool right now, the only thing you've got going for you in this match is the fact that these two... Sorry, these two will be dealing with a lot of fatigue, I'd imagine, from such a grueling match. I mean, the first ever tag team Hell in a Cell matchup. <laughs> That's pretty massive. Well, now about to bring Grandmaster Sexay off the top, and he does with a massive superplex. Uh, the next big pay-per-view coming your way for the SmackDown brand will be uh, Survivor Series, which is about seven weeks from now. It's going to be a long time until the superstars of SmackDown are on pay-per-view again. But uh, in November, they will be right back in the tag team... I mean, sorry, in the, uh, <laughs> the pay-per-view spotlight. As I said before, with there being such a big gap in between, uh, each one of the SmackDown champions will have to defend uh, within those 30-plus days. Uh, which means that even the winner of Kane and Brock Lesnar tonight, the winner of that matchup will have to um, defend the World of Book Championship again before Survivor Series. Very curious to see exactly what goes down when Brock Lesnar and Kane meet inside the ring once again. Who would have thought we'd be looking at two-time World of Weight champion Brock Lesnar? I mean, I know all signs kind of pointed in that direction. Like, it was it was kind of expected in a way. I feel like a lot of people felt that Brock Lesnar, you know, he was at his best as of late. But, uh... I, I just dread to think how they're ever going to stop that man. Big shoulder tackle there by Road Warrior Animal as he goes for the cover here on the Grandmaster Sexay. Not enough to get the job done. And here comes Scotty who is desperate to try and create some kind of an opening for his team. Too cool, uh, 
Not looking too good right now. I must feel bad for Grandmaster Sexay, who has not gotten a tag out once since this match started. And will take him into the corner. Why don't they have the Doomsday device? What the fuck? Now I'm upset. Oh, great reversal there by Grandmaster Sexay as he tries to get out of this one. Definitely needs to. An animal right back in it. Sex A up and Sex A down. Big power slam there by Animal. Hawk uh, didn't even need to come to the aid. <laughs> well, Too Cool never really stood a chance in this one, unfortunately. But the Road Warriors, I guess they are on a completely different level than most teams. Quick, defiant, and effective. That is just their style. The Road Warriors are victorious here tonight. And it looks like their new tag team championship reign is off to a great start. As we move onwards here tonight, up next, uh, the new Divas champion will be in action. AJ Lee looks to continue her newfound momentum. It's, a lot of people say it was a fluke victory at Hell in a Cell. We'll see if that proves to be true when she is set to go one-on-one -on -one with Eve, someone who defeated her to qualify for that match that AJ ended up winning. Uh, so we'll see if AJ can kind of right that wrong and defeat Eve here tonight. Well, Eve is first in line to try and knock off AJ Lee, and if she can defeat her tonight, we've been told that Eve will get a Divas Championship opportunity next week on here on SmackDown. But if not, the number one contender for the Divas Championship will be next in line, and that is, of course, the former champion, Beth Phoenix, who has her rematch due any, any day now, really. Curious to see... Uh, what the- oh, whoa, 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 whoa! AJ Lee... Just about to make her entrance, and this is- this is not right. This is not at all how this was supposed to go down tonight. We felt like Le Femme Fatale were maybe finally starting to go their separate ways. Uh, Nikki Bella clearly having a bit of an issue with Alicia Fox, but maybe Fox and Eve are still very much in each other's pockets, so to speak. As we are uh, waiting to see if this match will be cleared, see if this one will still be going down, is AJ Lee going to be able to continue to compete? These are all questions that we are just waiting to have answered. Uh, it looks to me like, yep, this one's been cleared. AJ Lee has uh, said that she is still willing to do this. That does not favor AJ Lee. Now, the important thing that a lot of people forget is that, yes, Eve holds a victory, over uh, AJ Lee, absolutely she does. Uh, let's not forget how Eve got that victory over AJ though. It uh, came with the uh, expense of some feet on the ropes. I definitely don't think Eve really proved as much as she thinks she did. She wants to forget that part and just remember the fact that she has a win over AJ. Yeah, that standing moonsault, she does that to perfection, I must admit. AJ Lee, I don't even think this is really a fair fight. Neckbreaker there by M. Eve, and AJ just about kicks out. And AJ now, here we go. Divas Champion is finding some fight in us still. I mean, the thing is, if you want the best of the best to be representing SmackDown at Survivor Series, John Laurinaitis has got to be putting those titles on the line pretty frequently right now. He's got to make sure that the best are definitely going to be who is representing SmackDown. We've been told that uh, there will be some additional matches added to Survivor Series on top of the five champion v. champion v. champion matches. Of course, the women's and divas only being between Raw and SmackDown, but the rest being between the three brands. There will be some additional matches involving uh, Team Raw, Team SmackDown, and Team ECW. 
but there'll be more information on that uh, to come in the near future once Vengeance is over and the Road to Survivor series is officially upon us. Vengeance, of course, being the raw pay-per-view that will take place in about three weeks' time, with Unforgiven being ECW's final stop this Sunday, just two days from now. Well, I give all the credit in the world to AJ Lee, who has really found her way back into this matchup, despite the fact that she was kind of cheated in the early goings here. So far, we've seen a lot of success from the new champions, from the Road Warriors to Sheamus. However, with uh, Damian Sand now getting his ass kind of handed to him by the big boss man, we know that sometimes justice is right around the corner. I mean, admittedly, I don't think AJ Lee winning at a... Uh, uh, Hell in a Cell was an injustice. I wouldn't go that far. I think it was actually a pretty great moment. I just think that it was an absolute underdog victory. That's my only real stance on that. That could maybe be perceived as negative. Oh no, not the booty pop and moonsault. Well, that's it. That is it. I cannot believe that is actually her finishing move. AJ, hand on the ropes. Referee saw it. There you go. Whoa. Whoa. Coming in like a house of fire. Eve just can't seem to get the best of her. There you go. Another roll-up attempt here by AJ. No. AJ ducks it. Big heel kick there. Divas champion goes in for the cover on Eve. No. And now AJ with the slice bread. Is she going to be able to defeat Eve? Let's not even look at the pinfall. There you go. <coughs> oh, I give AJ a lot of credit. She's really not backed down from the pre-match attack, from the fatigue from, you know, five days ago, from the, the fight that Eve is bringing. A lot of credit to be given. Oh, some dumbass is playing loud music, I think. And that doesn't make you a dumbass to listen to your music loud, it's just... I don't know, when you're at home on your own or driving around in a car, it's like, I don't know why everybody else around you needs to hear your music so bad. That was really loud. It feels like Eve has completely lost control of this matchup. Shout out to Daniel Bryan there. Eh? Eve now. Locked in this submission hole by AJ. Eve finds her way out of that one. This could be a turning point in the matchup here. Eve really relying on these moonsaults right now. I mean, I get it. You're, you're very skilled at it, but you don't have to go this hard at doing them. Head scissors take down there by Eve as she has uh, found herself back in control of AJ. <laughs> Eve is just very proud <laughs> to be able to do a standing moonsault. Fuck off. Sorry, you can probably hear that. It's just thump, thump, thump. It's just one of those. AJ with a kick to the midsection. There's the Shining Wizard. Center of the ring. Divas champion goes for the cover, and AJ victorious on her first night as Divas champion. Well, that means that Eve will not be first in line for a Divas championship, but that does mean that the former champion Beth Phoenix still very much looms overhead. And I gotta be honest, AJ Lee going one-on-one -on -one with a Divas champion, with a former Divas champion Beth Phoenix, does not sound like a favorable fight, if you ask me. Well, nonetheless, AJ Lee, she is victorious. The Divas Champion has done great here. I'm going to go ahead and stop this here so we don't see that really weird face that she ends on. And uh, we'll be moving to the main event now. The World Heavyweight Championship is on the line. Can Kane become a two-time World Heavyweight Champion as he challenges the new World Champion, Brock Lesnar, to a rematch right away next Heavyweight Championship. 
Well, here we go. The World Heavyweight title is on the line. And that title is back around the waist that some people feel it rightfully belongs on. Brock Lesnar had a monumental uh, 2010 uprising to become World Heavyweight Champion. And now he is back in it. He is right there, the World Heavyweight Champion. This is a big one for sure. Brock Lesnar and Kane one-on-one. -on -one. We'll see if uh, Kane is ready for Brock. Feels crazy to say, but uh... I just hope we don't see that Kimura lock of his. We've been told that Brock Lesnar will be fined very heavily if he is ever to use that move, especially if he successfully breaks another arm, as he is costing Laurinaitis a fortune. Not only in medical bills, but also in the fact that these superstars have to continue to be paid. Uh, and he loses a top star. You know, if he breaks Kane's arm tonight with that Kimura lock, for example, uh, John Laurinaitis is out the former World Heavyweight Champion. That's a that's a big loss, especially with Survivor Series right around the corner. Lesnar looks ready. He looks psyched up. One man who has not been able to uh, stomach the way things went down at Hell in a Cell is Triple H, who suffered a roll-up loss by Brock Lesnar to end that Hell in a Cell matchup. It was Triple H that was pinned in what has been a very lengthy feud between those two. Introducing the challenger, weighing 323 pounds, King! Triple H promises us that one day he will beat Brock Lesnar. He will get his revenge. We'll see about that, I suppose. From Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing 295 pounds, he is the world heavyweight champion, Brock Lesnar. This guy definitely means business. The world heavyweight title looking right at home on Brock Lesnar. Now in his second reign as champion. It was almost a year ago at TLC that Brock Lesnar first won that World Heavyweight title. We'll see how long he can hold on to it this second time. Kane and Brock Lesnar are starting things off as Lesnar just shoots straight in. Kane on his feet and Brock Lesnar. Whoa, hold on a minute! Brock Lesnar, F5 to Kane. And Bro oh, here we go. Nah, that's not the Kimura lock, though, at least. Well, Brock Lesnar busting out an F5 almost immediately. We're definitely seeing the ruthless side of the World Heavyweight Champion. Kane does not often get victimized like this. I mean, what do you do as John Laurinaitis if Brock Lesnar wins here tonight? You know, he suspended him for using the Kimura lock before, but if he uh, continues to dominate and hold on to that World Heavyweight title, Laurinaitis has to use this guy. I mean, at least he knows he's got a Survivor Series main event in the bag, right? Surely. Lesnar now going in for those triple power bombs of his. Oh, this is rough. This is not what I was expecting at all. I thought we were going to get a great matchup between these two. But it seems like Kane never even got out of the starting gate. Brock Lesnar just went straight in for the offense. He just seems to be enjoying himself right now. Kane up on his shoulders. And there's a second F5. For the former World Heavyweight Champion. And Lesnar now lifting him up. And no, 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 no. We were already told exactly what would go down there. And Kane thankfully managed to reach the ropes there. That might have been the only thing that kept him going. Well, that does not apply. Kane was able to roll through into the ropes just in time to prevent that from actually being locked in. 
but Lesnar did not manage to get the Kimura lock applied there. And Lesnar now, center the- oh, here we go again, Lesnar going straight in for it, the Kimura lock. Gonna try and break the arm of Kane for a second time. And there it is. My god. The fine doesn't seem to deter him at all. Brock Lesnar has absolutely no concern for money, for others' well-being, for anything. Well, he is very much ruling SmackDown with an iron fist for the foreseeable future. That was a dominant World Heavyweight Championship defense. What the hell? <coughs> Excuse me. What the hell is Laurinaitis gonna do? Anytime you put this someone in the ring with this guy, he breaks their damn arm. Can't be trusted. Well, nonetheless, Brock Lesnar is very uh, pleased with himself, clearly. As he has once again broken an arm here tonight. The World of Weight Championship has been retained. Thank you all for joining me for SmackDown here tonight. And I will see you guys just two days from now with Unforgiven. <laughs> I really had to think about that.